Good afternoon. Welcome to the Automated Home Show. It's been a little while. I wanted to share an update a few days ago, but I was actually sick and uh, I'm just recovering now. So I lost my voice for a few days and it would have sounded like Barry White if I tried. You wouldn't have even heard me actually. My voice was so bad. So um, I wasn't all that sick, but I did sound pretty bad. But I'm back now, back and time for an update. I'm probably going to forget a couple of things because there's Quite a few things going on. And as you can hear by my tone of voice, I'm feeling a lot more humorous and a lot more upbeat about things than my last up update that I shared when I, I really didn't see the funny side of, ever, of anything at all. But um, happy to report things are back on track. And in some ways, yeah, I'm still figuring it out. But in other ways, things are better than before. So, yeah, you know, learning experience. I don't have a whole lot of time, by the way, because I just ordered some food and I'm using my phone to record. If you're watching on YouTube, my phone is actually my video camera. And uh, yeah, so I can't actually check the status of my food or our food delivery. So um, yeah, this hopefully is not gonna be too long because I wanna eat. Where should we begin? All right, so I don't need to rehash what happened with my last update, but it was a complete disaster and hey maybe i was just having a bad day as well maybe i was tired but it really didn't seem funny at all however i did go through one by one device by device and i just added things and i fixed things and i added things and i fixed things and we are almost back to 100 percent fixed not quite there so anyway um, i'm gonna run through the damage report and just give you a status of each the printer was offline as well, which I didn't even realize until I tried to print something. That took a long time. I was, I was on the live chat with HP support. They were able to help me fix the printer. The printer's back online. Uh, the Sonos Arc and the Sub are back online. We never lost the Akara light at the dining table. We also never lost the Homey Pro, the Akara vibration sensor at the dining table, the water sensor at the kitchen sink. All that stuff was fine. So what else was it? The Muros window and door sensor at the front door. That's still offline, I'll talk about that in a moment. But just about everything else I think is back online. Forgive me if I forget something because quite a few things going on here. And um, yeah, so look, I think if the damage report is just the Muros window and door sensor is offline, I can live with that to be perfectly honest because I wasn't really getting a whole lot of value. I was getting some value from it, but not a whole lot of value from having that door sensor on our front door because I wasn't really running any automations or routines off of it. Okay, it was nice to be able to go and see a history of when the door opened and closed and give you peace of mind. But beyond that, yeah, I wasn't using it for any automation. So, and additionally, I was actually surprised that I was able to add that device in Alexa the first time around because I looked on the either the box or in the user manual thing that's in the box over here when I was gonna I was about to try and set it up the first time around and it said that I think I saw somewhere that Malaysia is not a supported country sorry I think I just um, triggered the uh, the Amazon voice assistant by by using that word whoops um, yeah so anyway my point is I was surprised that I was able to add the Muros door sensor the first time because I don't think Malaysia is actually a supported country, but I was able to add it the first time around. I can't do it again now. I don't know why. I was able to put it back into pairing mode. That just, it just won't go into that Amazon app that shall be unnamed so I don't interrupt my wife watching Seinfeld. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I can live with that. No big deal. So what's new? What's new? Well, actually, look, I learned of quite a few things in this process. I learned that there's actually a, a Sonos voice assistant that I didn't even know about before. So I've enabled that. And then I start playing around with that one, plus the Amazon voice assistant. I just see what I think is better for particular tasks. But I didn't even know that. So that's pretty good to know. Um, yeah, it's just some little additional functionality, bits and pieces like that. I mentioned a while ago that I wanted to get this Anki Crater Pro camera set up in the baby room for baby monitoring. Set up. It's great. 
It's fantastic. And not only can I use my phone to view and control the camera, so zoom in and pan around, look anywhere you want. It's really, really good. And two-way audio as well, by the way. So we can talk, not that I think we ever want to use that, but we can also listen. And that is actually useful if you want to hear if the baby is stirring or crying, obviously. But additionally, I was able to get my wife's phone connected and going as well and device sharing so she can do it as well. And this is fantastic. It's so good because now it means that we don't have to sneak into the room. And even the night vision is pretty good, right? So we don't have to sneak into the room and risk waking our little guy up. No, we can just check remotely. Which brings me to a question and I'd like to hear your thoughts about this. Now that we have this camera set up, where the baby sleeps. And we can, we can zoom in very close. We, get, we can hear what's happening pretty well. What would be your comfort zone about how far away you would be comfortable getting? I'm pretty sure we can all agree that being in the next room is perfectly fine. I'm pretty sure we can all agree with that, even the most conservative person. And I'm pretty sure we can also all agree that we're not gonna get in an Uber and go to the airport and fly to a different country, right? That's, that's a bit too far away. But I don't know, would you be comfortable leaving the home and going to check the mail? Would you be comfortable going like two minutes away? Three, four, five, like wh where would you draw the line? Where would your comfort zone be? Yeah, just an interesting thought experiment. What else have we got here? So look, um, updates about the other devices. The Akara water leak sensor that I've talked about, which I love, it probably is my favorite device at the moment just because it's really helping us to solve a problem. And it's just saved us so many times. I think just yesterday, I was so busy with like baby stuff and it saved me like three times in the in this morning. Fantastic, it's so good. So that's working perfectly. The vibration sensor, which I previously talked about, not so happy with that. Actually, it's better than I thought. I previously mentioned that to get the vibration sensor to switch on the dining table light, you kind of had to go and actually touch the vibration sensor. No, we figured out a technique to bump the table using this part if you're watching on YouTube. Sorry, if you're listening on podcast, <laughs> uh, I'm just showing like the ball of my thumb. If you use the ball of your thumb and bump the table pretty well, yeah, it triggers vibration detected and that turns on the light and it's fun. It's a, it's a novel way to turn on the light and my wife is also enjoying it as well. So that's cool. It's good to have spouse approval, not like that very silly routine that I set up where if the front door opened or closed, uh, a, a, an affirmation would play. That one was not so well approved of, but my wife is enjoying the vibration sensor. Like using the dining table as a giant light switch. She's enjoying that. She's enjoying interacting with the Amazon voice assistant that I won't mention again because she's watching Seinfeld. By the way, that's uh, spoiler alert, that's the funny story for today, which I'll talk about at the end. And um, yeah, you know, now seems like a good time to mention that if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about any of these devices that we're talking about. Uh, thumbs up if you want. If you're listening on podcast audio only, feel free to leave a comment or a review on the platform that you're listening on. But let's get back to it. What other devices do we have to talk about? Oh, I also mentioned that I ordered an Akara P1 motion sensor. It has arrived. I have it right here. It's cool. Look, it says on the box, just like the other Akara devices that I've bought previously, that an Akara hub is required. Not true. I've been able to connect it with my Homey Pro it's set up and it's working. I can see that it is detecting motion events in Homey. So I could run automations or flows off the back of that. I haven't set up any flows yet. And this is one of the, the fails that I have to share this update. The fail is, and this is pretty frustrating, not nearly as frustrating as the splitting up the Wi-Fi, just 
making my hair catch on fire last update, but this is pretty frustrating as well, right? So I bought three additional Akara T1 LED light bulbs because I was so impressed with the first one that we have at our dining table. That was so cool. So I got three more because we have three of these E27 threadable light fixtures in our outside lift lobby, elevator lobby area outside our front door. And I thought, fantastic. I'm going to replace all three of those light bulbs with these Akara smart lights. And then I'm going to use this P1 motion sensor in combination with those three Akara lights outside. And then if it's night, if motion is detected, turn on the lights, leave them on for five minutes, turn them off. Easy, right? This works well. This P1 motion sensor from what I can tell from my testing, obviously I don't have it mounted anywhere yet. I'm waiting because the problem I have is those Akara lights. <sighs> and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the problem is because I was able to get the first Akara light connected and working so easily. It was very intuitive and it was just a very enjoyable experience. And I, I love it. It is fantastic. That's why I went and bought more of them. The problem might be that we have three light bulbs controlled on the one switch. And additionally, we have two switches. You know, there's a switch outside the door. You can turn on and off and that turns all of those lights on and off. And then there's also a switch that does exactly the same thing inside the door. You can turn it on and off and turn all of those three lights on and off as well. So I don't know, I don't know if the problem is maybe because there's two different light switches controlling those lights or maybe the problem is there's three lights there and maybe maybe you can only do one at a time. I don't know, I just don't know. Uh, but what I can tell you is I was able to put the lights, the, the light bulbs, the smart lights into pairing mode and I was able to get them detected by Homey and added into Homey and then in the Homey app, sometimes there's three of them, right? So sometimes one of them or two of them at the most would be online, but the third would say, it would have that little red uh, warning um, indication and it would say this like uh, offline, like uh, this device left the D Zigbee network. And it was, it was so frustrating. I honestly probably stood there at the front door for an hour, turning the light switch on and off five times to put these lights uh, these bulbs into pairing mode and trying to add them on uh, repeatedly it was so annoying and it felt like an analogy right it felt like i was rolling a dice like a six-sided dice and i and i had to roll one two or three consecutively one three times in a row in order to get them all online because it was just so annoying like i would put it into pairing mode and then one of them would come online and then a different one would go offline and I'd put it into pairing mode and then I'd get, a, I'd get them, two of them to be online and then I'd try again and then one of them would drop off and it just, so far I'm unable. So I look in Homey at the moment and all three of them are off the Zigbee network. I don't think range, distance is the issue because, okay, there is a wall here and I, I don't know like the, how, you know, the, the material, how thick it is, but in terms of like true range, the water leak sensor at the kitchen sink is further away from the Homey Pro. So I don't think range is the issue. I, I really don't know. So look, before I mount this P1 motion sensor outside, I just want to make sure I can get these lights working together. Because if I can't, then I'm going to have to put this somewhere else and use this somewhere else. But I really, really want to use this motion sensor outside because I was thinking about alternative use cases, alternative ideas for this motion sensor. I can't really think of anything that I'm really thrilled about. Like for example, I already have the dining table light with vibration and voice control as well. So that's fine. And like, I, I wouldn't really want to run motion sensor at night to turn that light on because I don't think that's going to be appropriate in all cases. There might be situations where you want to just sneak past that dining table at night without turning the light on because I don't know, maybe you're holding the baby and you don't want to wake the baby up or something like that. So I really, really hope I can figure out a way to get all three of those Akara lights outside on the Zigbee network online and working together in harmony. If you can help me out with that, please 
comment below. I would appreciate it. Or email me, marty at automatedhome.com. Otherwise, I might even try to email Akara and just pose the question, see if, <laughs> see if they can help me. But um, yeah, anyway, that's enough about the P1 motion sensor, which seems fine. It's just the lights that are the problem. All right, so we've covered the Anki camera. What else do we have? We have, I feel like I'm forgetting something important here, but check this out. I did a bit of shopping. Oh, actually, before I tell you about the shopping, I did a day trip to Singapore recently. I don't know, about 10 days ago, approximately. Direct flight from Malaysia, it doesn't take very long. It doesn't cost very much. It's very, very easy. And I like Singapore. I've spent a lot of time there over the years. I thought, oh, fantastic. I had to go there for some other business and had uh, lunch with a friend while I was there as well. But I thought, if I get time, I also want to go to an electronics mall and just have a look at what smart home products they have there. Because, you know, Singapore's a developed, advanced country. I haven't been there for a while, but I thought, I bet they have some cool stuff there. I want to go check it out. So I went to one of the most famous electronics malls in Singapore, if, if you've been to Singapore or if you live in Singapore, I went to the, was it the Funan? I went to the Funan Center near City Hall area. And so disappointing. They had almost nothing. I, I couldn't believe it. Malaysia is a less developed country overall. But honestly, we have a much more impressive a, a range of, and availability of smart home products here in Malaysia, which I found shocking. I messaged one of my friends in Singapore afterwards and I said, hey, this is, this is really disappointing. And he said, oh, next time you should go to this other electronics mall. So I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to be back in Singapore again sometime soon. So I'll check out this other mall if I get the time. But in the wrap up of that visit to Singapore, I realized, and I didn't know this previously, but I realized that here in Malaysia, we can actually shop online in, on um, Amazon, Singapore. I didn't know that. Previously, I just looked at like US Amazon and of course you, you can't, they're not going to ship to Malaysia. So just, I thought it was a, a game over, deal breaker, not happening situation, but we can shop on Amazon Singapore. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. So of course I went straight on uh, Amazon Singapore and I wanted to check what they have in terms of smart home devices, products, brands, and yeah, well, look, anything would be better than that Funan sensor that I went and had a look at because they had virtually nothing. So I bought something. Check it out. It got delivered yesterday. Let's open it here in real time. All right, got my scissors. So I'm going to make a mess of this package here. Got some... Govi RGBIC TV backlight. How cool. I bought this for a few reasons. If I'm being perfectly honest, it's just because I'm in like acquiring toy mode at the moment. I want to acquire more smart home devices, more smart home products, just, just because that's the stage I'm in at the moment. But also I think this is going to make watching TV or movies a more immersive experience so the idea of this product is it's got a little sensor or camera that looks at the front of the screen if you're not familiar with this product but if you are you already know this and then it basically just um, extrapolates and displays more of the colors on the screen in real time like in exact real time the exact same moment around around your screen so we have a 65 inch samsung television which is great uh, but hopefully this makes it even better. This makes it even more brilliant and even more enjoyable. So I will get this set up soon, soon. <sighs> but this brings me to another small problem, right? I'm still trying to fix these Akara lights in the outdoor lift lobby area, elevator lobby area. I'm still trying to fix those. And I have another camera that I need to open and get set up as well. So I need to just calm down a little bit with the acquiring, buying devices and, and getting them delivered and not set up. I need to slow down a little bit. I'd like to get things set up properly, working properly, and then get the next thing, get that set up and get the next thing, get that set up. I don't want to go out and buy a dozen different devices and have them all sitting around here and I don't get a chance to even open them for a month or two. That's kind of silly. 
All right, so on the box, it says, uh, works with Google, works with the Amazon Voice Assistants that I mentioned earlier. This is my first Govi product, by the way. I'm excited. Thanks to Roche for the tip to get some Govi lights. Thought you might like this one. Yeah, anyway, so that's cool. Oh, it says it's for a 55 or 65 inch television. Perfect for me. And what is in this other little package that came stuck to it? I guess that is, you can't really see it. Um, I guess that's the sensor that is attached to the top of the television. Yeah, I'll play with that a bit later on. I don't know, that could be something completely different. Anyway, we'll take a look at that one later. I wanted to quickly thank someone that left a very, very informative comment on my last YouTube video. And let me just cut to that right now and share my screen. Okay, so DV Webster, Mr. Webster, I assume, left this amazing comment on my most recent YouTube video, the one where I was complaining about how everything broke and smart homes are frustrating. And it all happened because I tried to split out the Wi-Fi. And Mr. Webster left, look at this comment. I mean, this is the most detailed, knowledgeable, just value-packed comment I think I've ever seen. So thank you, Mr. Webster, so much. And I think it's really, really important that anybody else who might be in a similar situation to what I was in with my last update, or maybe even more importantly, somebody who's just thinking about getting started with going down this smart home path, smart home journey, I think they should read this comment before they do anything. Because in my last video, I think I talked about the importance of splitting your home Wi-Fi before you get started. But according to Mr. Webster here, that's probably a bad idea and unnecessary. So certainly I'm gonna point people to this comment. I think there's just so much value here that this could be a standalone video or website post. By the way, Mr. Webster, if you're watching and you wanna have a chat about this, uh, I'd love to talk to you or if you wanna write about this, I'll give you access to the website if you wanna share your information because you're obviously a very, very knowledgeable person. And this is just incredible. So much good value here options that people might want to consider. Personally, I like the idea of, where is it? Uh, 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 yeah, this one. Just move the, move away, move to the, I'm summarizing here, but basically move to the furthest distance in your home where you still have Wi-Fi connection, or it's just dropping in and out, and then take one or two steps back in to range, and that will be 2.4 gigahertz because five gigahertz has a shorter range than 2.4. So if you wanna make sure that you're using 2.4, like I think that's the hack that I'm gonna use in the future. I have mentioned in the past that we're probably gonna move from this home that we're in right now, about a year from now. And I think when we move, rather than splitting Wi-Fi networks, I might just go with Mr. Webster's tip. So. Thank you so much, Mr. Webster. And if you want to talk more about it, I'd be honored to talk to you. You're obviously a very knowledgeable guy. All right, that's it for Smart Home Updates. If you're just here for the Smart Home Updates, you can tune out now. Otherwise, if you want to hear a funny story, because last time I shared an update, I wasn't really in the mood. I wasn't really seeing the funny side of life. I didn't really have the attitude to share a funny story, but I do have actually a few, but I'm just going to share one with you today. And that is something that's kind of surprising to me. Seinfeld. I grew up on Seinfeld in the 90s. It was a hit. And I don't know, I, I probably watched almost every episode at some point or maybe multiple times. I loved it. I still love it to this day. I just haven't seen it much recently. My wife is a fair bit younger than me. And she grew up in Malaysia. And, you know, Seinfeld's not really very famous in Malaysia. Recently, I kind of played a couple of episodes because it's on Netflix. Like every episode of Seinfeld is on Netflix. And she started watching and she started liking Seinfeld. And now she loves it. Moreover, her mom, my mother-in-law, when she comes to visit, her mom now also likes Seinfeld. I think this is hilarious. So it's just been playing in the background almost continuously for the last month. 
And uh, we're almost to the end of season nine. There's so many, so many episodes. I think like in total, there must be over 100, 200. I should probably check that. But there's a lot of episodes and it's just been playing almost nonstop in our home. And my wife absolutely loves it. And I find that pretty funny because if you look at her demographic, she doesn't really fit the mold of the sort of person and certainly not her mother. They don't really fit the mold of the sort of people that might have been familiar with it in the 90s. And um, anyway, I kind of thought that was funny. If you want to get in touch, you can reach me as always, Marty at automatedhome.com. If you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, feedback, feel free to reach out, let me know. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll talk again soon.